From Studio 10 in downtown Numberopolis, it's The Number Show, starring Zero and the Digits, with special guests Number 4 and E. And now, here's your host, C. Hey, yo, thank you, one and all. And I mean that. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Not to mention our lovely audience. Yay! The numbers lady suggested I call up E to come talk about how he got his name from Euler, a Swiss mathematician. Audience, please welcome E. <laughs> Hello, E. Hey, I like your bow tie. Tell us about your tie. And Euler. Leonhard Euler was a Swiss mathematician during the 18th century. He is one of the greatest mathematicians of all time. He wrote over 60 volumes about mathematics. 60 math books? But they were heavy and full of equations. Naturally. In fact, I am the base of the natural logarithm that students study in high school. I was named by Euler and have been known as Euler's number ever since. I'm approximately equal to 2.7. Below, you can see the first 50 digits of my decimal expansion. Hey, digits! You all show up within the first 50 digits! You also zero. This is why the numbers lady and I believe we should celebrate Euler and me on the 7th of February in the U.S. and the 2nd of July outside the U.S. So tell me about your tie. My tie shows what is known in math as Euler's identity. The famous physicist Richard Feynman called it the most remarkable formula in math. Many mathematicians consider it to be the most beautiful mathematical formula. It looks simple, but complicated at the same time. Zero, you and I are related via this formula. You, zero, can be expressed as me, raised to the power of the imaginary unit i times pi, and then plus one. Wow, how can a unit be imaginary? Math can be very weird. My head is spinning. Thanks for stopping by, E. Math teachers, try to remember to celebrate Euler and E on E-Day. It's time for a break. When we're back, we will meet our special guest, Four. She will discuss the results of her DNA test. Stay tuned for a great show! Remember your friend Euler's E every time you sit down at a bench constructed of logs at an outdoor event. And, as promised, we are back. And as we foreshadowed, our guest tonight is the one and only number four. <laughs> Welcome, four. Thank you. It's really great to have a chance to really get to know you a little better. That's why I'm here, because I've been learning about my own roots. And you have something to share with us? Sure do. I recently sent away to have my DNA analyzed. Now, how do you do that? Well, you swab your mouth and mail it to the company. So now you've got the results back? Yes, and I have to say... I'm pretty amazed at what I've learned. I'm from the entire world. Wow, you must have a really complicated family tree. I come from counting using hands, tally marks, and pebbles shown at the bottom of the chart. The Labome bone from the Labome Mountains in southern Africa dates back from more than 40,000 years ago. 
Did you know that the word for pebbles in Latin is calculus, like modern-day calculus? And they were perhaps the original physical calculator. Wow, like an early abacus. Yes. Look how I evolved from ancient number systems as horizontal or vertical marks, dots, feet-like cuneiform shapes, and even knots. Wow, you go way back. I see the dates from BCE and CE with a mark of zero. Me! What do BCE and CE mean? BCE means before common era, and CE means common era. Zero, you are the demarcation. Wow. Wow. Also, did you know that the cuneiform number system was written with a stylus on clay tablets? It arose in present-day Iraq and was based on 60, which established the number of minutes in an hour. Why 60? There are many theories as to why. We're going to have a lot more about this in the supplemental materials. As I look at the chart, I see that nearly all of my ancestors in BCE were all visual representations of four items. Of course, archaeologists are still learning more all the time as they find artifacts and carbon date them. Where were you represented as four knots? The quipu system of the Incas of South America was a colorful accounting system. Wow, this is fascinating but complicated to understand quickly. Even the Romans started with four bars and then shortened it to the letter I and the letter V, meaning one less than five that most students are taught. So it sounds like you're happy with the results of your DNA. I am so psyched to keep learning more and more about my family tree. I'm thinking of taking a trip to some of these countries to learn even more about my ancestors. That is quite a story. And now here you are. Except for one thing. What's that? There's still a little variation in how I'm formed. Most of the time, in print or on the computer, you see a closed form with a triangle on top. But young students are taught to handwrite for with two vertical arms that look like goalposts. Let's take a look at the two varieties. I created a coded visual that shows both of the versions, but you have to use a color decoder to compare them. To thank you for inviting me to the show, the decoder is dedicated to you, Zero. But you know what? Since you may not read a whole lot of handwritten material, you won't come across the old open for so much, even if you yourself write it that way. I like the decoder, especially since it celebrates me. I've written a little rhyme that sort of sums up how I feel about the difference between how children are taught to make me and how they see me everywhere. Would you like to hear it? Absolutely. Audience, what do you think? Hit it, Four! The technical wind blew over one of my goalposts by me. Worksheets show branches side by side, looking like two arms raised in pride. Yet on keyboards, clocks, and signs around, with triangle top is how Four is found. Tonight has been really interesting. Great stuff to think about. I suspect everyone is ready for a break from our sponsor. When back, it will be time for our game. DNA for Me celebrates the foursome of Francis Crick, Rosalind Franklin, James Watson, and Maurice Wilkins for their contributions to the discovery of the double helix structure of DNA. And we're back. And woo, my head is still spinning from that whirlwind tour of all of Four's ancestors. Time for a little game. And what have we got today? The challenge today is to name animals with four legs in 15 seconds. Four should not play this game. Call back E to play against Zero. I do know lots about animals with four legs. 
and I like to play fair and square, so I suggest I judge the animals named. Welcome back, Heath. We hope you can play tonight's game. It will be short, unlike your digital expansion. <laughs> <laughs> the game is to name animals with four legs. Ready, set, go! You listed giraffe, cheetah, frog, and dog. All good. But let's consider gorilla. I have a carved one from Uganda, one of the places gorillas live. Gorillas walk using both of their two legs and their shorter two arms on their knuckles. They typically walk as quadrupeds when they're on the ground using their arms essentially like legs. What does quadruped mean? Four feet. So, I believe we should accept gorilla. E, you also listed squid. Squids have far more than four legs, so I reject squid. You listed five acceptable animals. Yay for E! Now, zero. You listed zebra horse, and cat, which are four-legged animals. You also listed Stegosaurus, a dinosaur which is extinct, but did have four legs when living. I believe it is acceptable since we did not mention it must be living now. You also listed snails. Snails have zero legs, so not acceptable. Oh, right. But I love them, and I like that they have my number of legs. E named five acceptable animals and zero four acceptable animals. E wins. I have a small version of me to put on your walls, zero and four. Yay! All right. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to celebrate Puzzle Day. That was January 29th with a historic math question. Learn to multiply by four as you count the total numbers of legs of all four-legged animals awaiting adoption at the Numberopolis event on April 4th. Four, I believe you have something to tell us about the colors of a puzzle or a map. Think of a puzzle where each piece is one color. So the puzzle will not make a picture. No, it is more like a map where each area shows up by being only one color. A map is actually a puzzle that covers a space. Like a map of the countries of Europe or the U.S. states. Yes, the question that has intrigued mathematicians for many centuries, how many colors do you need so that no two neighbor pieces are the same color? I don't know, like... Thousands? Less than that. Exactly four, in fact. But this mass four-color theorem was not proven during Euler's time. It was the first major theorem to be proven by computers. Kenneth Apple and Wolfgang Hocken proved that four is the number in 1976. The numbers lady created a short rhyme to help folks remember. Would you like to hear it? He should sing! How many colors must you take for any map you want to make? How many colors so in your sight? No, two neighbors are alike. Four? I'll remember that. It's time for another break. Stick around for some gratitude with attitude. Whenever you consider the meaning of logical necessity, create a map and try coloring it with only three, four, or five colors where no two neighboring pieces are the same color. Four colors are necessary. We're back, and it's time for thank you notes. Thank you, giraffes, for making your legs really long so they're easy to count. 
Thank you, DNA, for remembering where we've all been, even when I can't remember what I went into the kitchen for. Thank you, E, for being a number with an infinite digital expansion that is not a Greek letter. Thank you, Towns, for providing a convenient central location to put a square. Hey, guess what? That's our show! Thanks, everybody, for being here! Thanks for watching, and I want to thank our very, very special guests, Four and Oilers Number E. Our next guest will be Pie. He is selling pies from a food truck. Come and meet the King of Circles on March 10th as people in the USA get ready for Pie Day on March 14th, Einstein's birthday! <laughs> Until March 10th, so long from Studio 10 in downtown Numberopolis! Please like, comment, and subscribe to The Number Show, starring Zero and the Digits. Don't forget to download the Learning Guide, Scavenger Hunt, and Associated Activities from the website at www.numbersalive.org or Teachers Pay Teachers. Thank <laughs> you.